Hello everyone. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to present ASAP, which is an adaptive scheme for asynchronous processing of event-based vision algorithms. This work has been developed by the GRBC Robotics Laboratory of the University of Seville uh, in the context of the Griffin IRC Advanced Grant Project by Raúl Tapia, José Ramiro Martínez de Dios, Aníbal Ollero, and myself, Augusto Gómez Aguirre. During the presentation, I will show the motivation of this work and, and what the proposed scheme is. Uh, I will present the experimental results, conclusions, and some future directions. The motivation for us is very clear. Uh, we have talked about, or, or other colleagues have presented all the advantages of event cameras for us. Uh, those advantages are very helpful, so we want to integrate them on our aerial robots. And in particular, this is quite challenging for flapping wing flying robots, uh, aka ornithopters. Uh, the aerial robots usually have payload limitations, but in the case of ornithopters, uh, those limitations are even greater. And the payload limitation entail uh, also limitations on the processing capabilities as we cannot put on board the computer uh, that we would like sometimes. So just to contextualize, uh, in the literature we can differentiate two types of event processing. Some works, uh, group events, either by uh, number of events or by time, and other works process events uh, one by one. Similarly, uh, there are two trends of how to provide those uh, events to the algorithms. The first trend, pack the events into packages uh, and, and then send them to the algorithms and the other trend, send them directly one by one. What's the problem with this? Okay, imagine that we have an event by event algorithm that have already processed all the events of the last package. It will not be able to process any more event until the next package has arrived. Uh, conversely, if all the events are sent back one by one, there is a risk of overflowing the system. So the proposed approach try to uh, to manage this issue by uh, adapting the package sizes dynamically. So we propose a scheme for event by event processing uh, in which we aim at processing the events as soon as possible without overflowing. Uh, to do that, uh, ASAP has two modules. One uh, control, uh, close control loop module that adapts the, to the event generation rate. So uh, we try to uh, we try to adapt to a certain uh, to a given temporal difference uh, for the algorithm and the packaging. For, so we want to have the algorithm processing in in the same time or almost the same time that the temporal difference inside of every package. Additionally, we also include a pre-processing filtering module, which performs random event discard uh, of the event flow. The main idea or the motivation of this comes from another paper that we have published in this very same conference called Asynchronous Event-Based Clustering and Tracking for Intrusion Monitoring in UAS. We found that uh, if we perform this random event discard, we could uh, reduce significantly the, the computation requirements of the algorithm without a significant, with, without reducing significantly the, the performance of the algorithm. So we include it in this scheme. To validate the scheme, we have performed two types of experiments. The first type of experiments was move, by moving the, the camera with the hand, the second type was with, uh, we wanted to try it on a, a real uh, aerial platform. We use a DJI flame wheel a 450 with a peak tracer autopilot, and we run the UAL abstraction layer developed at the GRBC Robotics Laboratory, which runs on top of a PX4 low level controller and ROS. The multi-rotor equipped an innovation Davis 346, and in terms of processing, uh, we had a CADAS beam 3 
which is a low cost board for those that you are not familiar with this uh, hardware. This is kind of a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino, but a bit more powerful, uh, but still far from bigger and heavier computers. In the first round of experiments, we perform highly abrupt movements with the hand uh, and the camera while running the clustering algorithm. And as the vibration speed increases, uh, we could see that the event packages uh, accumulates more and more events. Uh, with low vibration levels, we, um, we could have very little events on one package because the system will not be overflow. And when we have a very a strong movement, very abrupt movements, we will pack more events on the, on the very same uh, scheme. We also have a threshold that is the one that triggers the preprocessing filter. And we can observe from the figure on the right that, that uh, when the threshold is reached, the filter is triggered and reduce the event rate. On the left video, we can see that when we move the camera, uh, more events are generated and we accumulate more events in each package. But interestingly, when we stop the camera, the size of the packages will be reduced. This is something similar that will happen on the right video where we are progressively increasing the vibration of the camera and every time we are accumulating more and more events in each packet. Uh, and we will also see at some point that when the threshold, uh, when we reach the threshold, the gamma filter, the preprocessing filter will act. On the onboard processing experiments, we use the experimental platform described before to fly over several chairs. We increase the number of chairs along the trajectory and therefore the number of events generated are also increasing. Again, we use the, the same clustering algorithm for this experiment and we observe that during the experiment, uh, the threshold for preprocessing filtering was not reached. On the figures on the right, we can see again that the the size of the packages increase uh, when we generate more events, but more interestingly, we can see that the time difference uh, between the processing time of the algorithm and the time encapsulated in each package tends to zero by negative values, which entails that the system is never overflow and, and it reaches almost real-time performance. In conclusion, we propose a scheme for event by event processing that adapts the computational load dynamically. Uh, we try to compute the events as soon as possible while preventing overflow. When we cannot prevent overflow by just simply uh, changing the size of the packages, we uh, trigger a random discard procedure. The future directions will include uh, the adaptation to uh, different dynamics of the scenes, and evaluate other algorithms and sensors. And of course, the integration on the uh, Griffin platforms that are being developed, which have a strong payload limitation, as I said before. Uh, in, as, again, as I was saying before, this was developed in the context of Griffin, but it was also developed in the context of Aerial Core H2020 European project. So I encourage uh, you to visit the website and see the cool advances that are being posted there. And of course, to visit the, our GRBC Robotics Laboratory latest advances in the website, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation as much as myself. And thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Not on the chat. Uh, Mm. Okay, no, okay, so, oh yeah, there is one. Do you use any event filters such as noise or K-noise? Why noise or K-noise? K, K noise? 
Well, the, the scheme is agnostic to the filters or the, to the processing that you do after you receive the events. So as we wanted, as we just wanted to see if it was possible to, to adapt the packaging size, uh, we didn't have to use any additional filtering. So we just fit the event by event cluster algorithm that was presented in the other paper I was mentioning before. 